guys, in today's video, I'm gonna talk about the skin whitening ingredient, Arbutin. So I'm gonna talk about it, and then towards the end of the video, I'm gonna talk about the Hadalabo Shirojun products that contain Arbutin, specifically their lotion and their cream. I have used both, and so I'll share with you a bit about their ingredients and my experience using them. But to start off with Arbutin, what is it? It is a compound that is found in pear trees, blueberry leaves, cranberry leaves, the bearberry uh, plant, and it's actually a naturally occurring uh, version, if you will, of hydroquinone. It's basically hydroquinone plus glucose. If you're new here, I have a video talking about hydroquinone, but hydroquinone is the most potent and most well-studied uh, skin whitening ingredient. So that is what you can find over the counter here in skin bleaching creams and with a prescription you can get as well. As you'll recall from that video that I did talking about hydroquinone, there are risks of irritation and pigmentary changes with long-term use of hydroquinone. It's actually banned in Europe and in Japan and, Japan and throughout Asia. Arbutin is used traditionally in Japanese skin whitening products and the mechanism of action for how uh, Arbutin leads to skin whitening is through reversible inhibition of the rate limiting step for pigment production, which is tyrosinase. Tyrosinase is an enzyme that is required for pigment production and overactivity of that can be, is responsible to a certain extent for hyperpigmentation. And so it can reversibly block that, meaning it's not permanent. And so the activity of the enzyme in your skin uh, that it is inhibited can go back to, to being functional. Um, all right, so do know that hydroquinone is a lot more potent in terms of its inhibitory effects on tyrosinase than just straight arbutin. That's a little bit about how it is thought to work at least. Um, but in terms of just plain arbutin, its efficacy has largely been demonstrated in laboratory models, meaning cells in a dish or small animal models. It's been shown to be effective in terms of inhibiting pigment production and in whitening. But we have a paucity of human-based studies and well-controlled clinical trials on arbutin. We don't have the kind of data that we, we have with hydroquinone using arbutin. We have an older lab-based study that showed that arbutin inhibit, decreased tyrosinase activity, uh, but also in that in that study, this was back in back in the 90s, uh, there was an increase there was an increase in pigmentation paradoxically uh, towards towards the end of the study. Also, another study showed that looked at kind of the tried to determine the most effective concentration. And that study, which was done in Japan, showed that higher concentrations of arbutin are more effective at inhibiting tyrosinase, but come with a great risk of skin irritation that paradoxically can lead to um, hyperpigment, rebound hyperpigmentation or hyperpigmentation as a result of what's called post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, meaning the higher doses are irritating, they cause some inflammation in the skin that subsequently leads to more hyperpigmentation. So the devil is in the details as far as a delicate balance of the dosage to get optimal inhibition of the enzyme without simultaneously leading to paradoxical hyperpigmentation through inflammation and irritation. But one of the nice things about arbutin, at least based on in vitro studies, meaning cells in a dish, is that it appears to be less toxic to cells than hydroquinone, uh, meaning less likely to cause irritation than, than hydroquinone. So perhaps a safer alternative in terms of avoiding side effects of excessive irritation. That is one of the issues that people can run into here in the States who purchase over-the-counter hydroquinone and they use it for a long time. Their skin can just become very irritated by it, to, to name a few possible, possible issues with it. Uh, and that irritation can actually set you up for failure. So Arbutin is potentially safer uh, in terms of the, the inflammation. Arbutin also has some antioxidant properties. Antioxidants, you'll recall, are those guys that scavenge the damaging free radicals that are generated in our skin that uh, impair our, our collagen synthesis, degrade proteins in our skin, and damage the DNA in our skin and lead to increased pigmentation just on their own. Uh, they are generated from day-to-day -day stressors, pollution, smoking, and ultraviolet radiation, a major, major 
foot on the gas pedal of, of pro-pigmentation, of pro-pigmentary pathways, it's going to be ultraviolet radiation. Those free radicals, arbutin actually can scavenge some of that and kind of help to buffer against some of that damage from, from ultraviolet radiation. Like with hydroquinone though, if you do use this ingredient, you must use it with aggressive photo protection, meaning broad spectrum, high SPF sunscreen, reapplied consistently throughout the day, not spending prolonged periods of time outdoors, always reapplying your sunscreen and wearing a broad brimmed hat, large sunglasses, a face shield, uh, if you really want optimal results and if you really want to minimize the minimize the risk of hyperpigmentation. Uh, you really have to be very aggressive with sun protection. So in summary, arbutin appears to be a safe and effective, well-tolerated potential alternative to hydroquinone, though less potent. Like with anything that you put on your skin, it can cause irritation. When you have irritation on the skin, that too puts you at risk for hyperpigmentation. So be aware if you pursue it, uh, it's something that has the potential for risk of irritation. And like I said, if you use it or if you're using any kind of skin whitening product, you have got to use aggressive sun protection. Even if, if you do nothing, use aggressive sun protection. On your journey to clearing your hyperpigmentation, that's gonna take you so far just doing that alone. We've got data to support that statement. I'm not just, I'm not just talking out, out, of, out of my mouth here. All right, so that's our butin. Uh, it has potential, but what you might actually have come here for is just to know my thoughts on the Shiro Jun line. Hopefully I'm saying that right. You guys know I love Hotalabo. It's a Japanese brand. They, they make wonderful products that are free of fragrance, very sensitive, skin friendly. And this particular line uh, comes in a blue blue packaging. It's all products that, are ba that include uh, Arbutin. But these products also have uh, magnesium ascorbyl phosphate, which is a lipid soluble, more stabilized uh, vitamin C that has potential as a brightening agent. It's not as well studied as L-ascorbic acid, like what you find in uh, SkinCeutical CE Ferulic uh, for skin brightening, but it is promising. And it's one of those ingredients that will come, you'll find in products that are so expensive, really expensive cosmeceuticals. Uh, we'll sell you on, on M ascorbyl phosphate, magnesium ascorbyl phosphate, uh, as a, an alternative to L ascorbic acid and being less irritating and potentially more stable. But it's pretty. This product's pretty inexpensive and has that in it. All all of the products in this line have that in it. I only tried the lotion and the cream, and I've got to say, just looking at the ingredients of all of their products from this line, just to, to cut to the chase, I would definitely recommend considering the lotion. I really enjoyed this product, pretty much used it all up. A little bit about the line, uh, they have several different products that I believe all kind of go in order of increasing thickness. And this is one of the thinner products. They have this lotion and then next in line is gonna be um, a whitening milk. And then after that is a serum. And then after that is going to be the cream. And then they also have a sheet mask. The main difference between the lotion and then the milk, the serum, and the cream is gonna be that the lotion is actually free of oils. It's oil free. Whereas the, um, the milk, the serum, and the cream all have meadow foam oil in it, which is a fine oil, but some people who have acne find that using oils on their skin can trigger a flare. So if that's you, you know, I would definitely recommend considering the lotion, it is oil free. But all the products have arbutin and, and magnesium ascorbyl phosphate, so you get those skin brightening ingredients. They all also have hyaluronic acid, which is a wonderful humectant that can hydrate up the skin. So just in terms of my experience using their lotion, it is very uh, runny, but it adheres to the skin nicely. The way to use it is after you cleanse your face while your skin is still damp, just take a pea-sized amount into your hands and pat it all over your face. It's very hydrating, brings a lot of, of, of hydration in the skin. But after you do that, go ahead and put on a heavier moisturizer. Now I used probably about two thirds of the lotion before I started using the cream. I used the lotion and really found it beneficial. I found that it helped in terms of, I did actually see some, some brightening when I was using this. I pretty, I've used it pretty much up. I mean, there's, there's a ton, like maybe a teaspoon left, 
But as I was using this, I definitely saw a skin brightening. I initially used it for several weeks underneath a heavier moisturizer, underneath my CeraVe moisturizing cream, which I always use. And then I wanted to try out the, um, the cream. Now you wanna layer on a heavier cream on top of this because it doesn't have much in terms of, a, of an occlusive ingredient that will really hold in, seal in that hydration. So you definitely wanna use a heavier cream on top of it. So I, I later tried the whitening cream on top and I made my way through probably a, a little over half of the whitening cream. Again, it's a thicker, it's a thicker vehicle, more occlusive. I really enjoy it. I have enjoyed this as well. I didn't notice though any any leap in, in uh, brightening, skin whitening, when I used the whitening cream. This is not drying, it's not irritating, it didn't sting. I love Hot Labo because in general, they always avoid fragrance in their products. They don't put any drying alcohols, anything. There's no exotic essential oils. They really keep the formulation minimal, logical, evidence-based, largely aimed at hydration. And in the case of the Arbutin line, you know, you've got active ingredients for skin brightening that are set up in a vehicle that allows them, that allows those active ingredients to, to stand the best chance of delivering results for you. Uh, as opposed to a lot of more expensive cosmeceutical brands and companies and products, you will see they will just pack in the ingredients into products. And a lot of the ingredients are just like, why do they put that in here? Why, why so many fragrancy compounds? Why so many extracts? It's really just throwing too much at your immune system at one time. It's like trying to make, make pasta and you wanna season your pasta dish and you go into your pantry. If you guys have seen my pantry, this will make more sense. But you go into your pantry and you just decide that you're gonna put everything in your pantry into your pasta. It's gonna taste terrible and your guests are never gonna come back to another dinner party again. That's the case with cosmeceuticals. If you know just one or two ingredients that you want, that's really what you wanna focus in and dial in on, not trying to go, go for, for everything in the kitchen all at once. That's why I love Hot Labo. Really focuses on, on logical delivery of ingredients. Now you may wonder, do I need all the products in the Arbutin line in order to see results? You absolutely don't. I personally think that using a lotion alone, maybe with a moisturizer that you're already using on top, is, is perfect, that is perfect. Uh, but you know, if you don't have a moisturizer, I do recommend their their moisturizer in this line. It pairs really well with it and is a great moisturizer. Uh, so I, I would re strongly recommend the Hot Lava products. Affordable, well formulated, and I have about a teaspoon left of the lotion here, so I'll show you what it looks like up close. Uh, you can see it's pretty liquidy, so just take a little bit of this in your hands. Here, I'll show you how to use it. So you just need to do a little bit of this in your hands and then just pat it into your skin when your skin is after you've cleansed your skin, so you know, not on a full face of sunscreen like I'm doing here for illustrative purposes, but I mean, it's really easy to use and it's just very lightweight and hydrating. And then putting on a heavier moisturizer on top will seal that in. Yeah, if you're going to pursue Arbutin in your skincare routine, I strongly recommend the Hot Lavo products. They're affordable. This bottle of lotion, I can't remember how much it was, it was under $20 and it lasted me four months using a, just in the evening time, actually. Last me four months, I purchased mine as well as a cream on Yes Style, which is where I get all of my Japanese and Korean skincare products. But if you have H Mart in your area, they sell it there. If you have another Asian grocery store that carries Japanese uh, cosmetics, you'll likely find it there as well. Uh, it does take a while to come from Yes Style, uh, just so you know, if you order it, I think it took like four weeks. Now, if you're new here, I'm not new to Hot Labo. I've used a lot of their products in the past, uh, including their hyaluronic acid-based products, their lotion, the skin plumping gel cream I love. And I would say in comparison to those, I definitely do appreciate more of an anti-inflammatory outcome with this one uh, in comparison to those. Those deliver great hydration into the skin, but I feel as though the Arbutin definitely does bring something else to the table as far as an active ingredient. And I certainly did witness a skin brightening, skin whitening effect in terms of hyperpigmentation, areas of hyperpigmentation on my face were improved with using that. And I definitely would go back to it. It's an affordable product. So yeah, I hope this video was helpful to you guys in terms of talking about Arbutin, how it works, uh, its efficacy, 
and and reviewing the Halabo products. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.